Hi, Mel here, and today I'm taking you with me to visit the Turkish Airlines Business Class Lounge at Istanbul Airport. I was able to spend some time in Istanbul on my way home from Toulouse, France by taking advantage of Turkish Airlines' free stopover feature. Istanbul quickly became one of my favorite cities, and my two days there flew by. Before I knew it, it was time for my flight back to Chicago. I was excited about my flight, but I was also excited about the Turkish Airlines Lounge because I'd heard so many great things about it. Did I love it as much as I expected I would? And what did I think set this lounge apart from most other business class lounges? I hope you'll follow along with me today to find out. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, I hope you'll hit the like button and subscribe. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Istanbul Airport, the larger of Istanbul's two international airports, opened in 2019. It consists of a single terminal with five concourses. And although it's only one terminal, that terminal is huge. My flight was scheduled to depart the Istanbul Airport at 7.30 in the morning. So I left for the airport at 3.30 a.m. in order to give myself enough time to check in, make it through security, walk to the lounge, and spend some quality time there. The good news is that nobody else was as crazy as I was, so there were no lines at all. I breezed through check-in and quickly made my way through security. The lounges at Istanbul Airport are on the second level of the main terminal. Turkish Airlines offers two identical lounges. One is for Miles and Smiles Elite members, and the other is for business class travelers who are flying business class on Turkish Airlines or a Star Alliance partner. If you're flying business class and also have elite status, I recommend you visit the business class lounge because it's usually not as busy. After I made it through security, I made my way towards the central part of the terminal building. The Istanbul airport is quite beautiful and not surprisingly, it's received the Air Transport Award for Airport of the Year four out of the last five years. I didn't go far before spotting signs pointing to each of the lounges. I was directed to the right for the business class lounge as expected. I kept following the signs walked past the duty-free shop and found the escalator that leads to the lounge the agent at the bottom checked my credentials I took the escalator up to the second floor and scanned my boarding pass on my way in. I found these glass lockers near the entrance and decided to make my life easier by stowing my bags there. So let's head in now. As I entered the reception area, I was greeted by this giant screen, which I think makes quite an impression. Heading to the right brings you to the heart of the lounge, and if you pass the beautiful grand piano, you're headed in the right direction. As I walked further in, I was struck by how empty the lounge was. I guess there were very few people up so early in the day, so I felt like I practically had the lounge all to myself. I'm not sure a lounge has ever felt this peaceful to me. Without the usual crowds, I could really get a feel for the space. I loved the overall aesthetic. It wasn't as fancy as Qatar's El Marjan Business Lounge, but it felt homey and welcoming, with all the natural wood, stone-covered cooking pavilions, and cafe-style seating. This is a space that beckons you to take a seat and relax. The cafe feel also captures the importance the Turkish Airlines places on food and hospitality. When you enter, you immediately know that food is the centerpiece here, and not merely an afterthought. So did the food offerings live up to my expectations? Thankfully, yes. As I mentioned before, I arrived very early, before 5 a.m., but even at this hour, there were plenty of options. And the food offerings felt warm and welcoming to me. I think more than any other lounge I've ever spent time in. 
Scattered among the cafe-style seating are live cooking stations throughout the central atrium of the lounge. You can watch the action as the chefs prepare fresh Turkish dishes throughout the day. The chef in this pavilion was cooking made-to-order eggs and a few Turkish dishes, including menemen, a traditional Turkish breakfast dish consisting of eggs, tomatoes, green peppers, and various spices. In addition to the live cooking pavilions, I found a self-serve soup station and a cold buffet. And even at this hour, it was up and running and filled with a rainbow of attractive options. Between the buffet and the chef making menemen, I had some great options for breakfast. And it was as delicious as I expected. After finishing up, I found a working bakery. They were making an assortment of breads, pastries, and Turkish cement. And everything baking smelled incredible. You could help yourself to the freshly baked cement from this cute cart. Right next door, you'll find Turkish butter, and on tap, you can get a glass of Turkish Iron, a salty yogurt drink. Even at this early hour, they have dessert options. Is it ever too early for baklava and other Turkish sweets? And there were even more sweet options in the room known as the library, as well as a station with fresh fruits and juices. For those of you who need your morning coffee, the lounge has two coffee bars, each with a barista serving hot and cold espresso drinks as well as authentic Turkish and Arabic coffee. As someone who loves a live barista, you might be able to guess how happy this made me. But if you're more of a tea drinker, you can visit this beautiful station that offers a very nice selection of Turkish teas. There are also multiple self-serve stations where you can grab a number of different cold drinks, including bottled water, Turkish and international soft drinks, and beer. Speaking of beer, as far as alcohol is concerned, there's not a working bar, but they do have a cart with a few options that you can pour for yourself. At this point, the smell of the coffee and the aroma of the baked goods got to me. So I decided to have a snack of cappuccino with honey and a simit with butter. I'm not sure putting butter on a simit is acceptable, but I really wanted to try the Turkish butter and I can tell you, it did not disappoint. From what I've heard, even though the food was amazing while I was there, I've heard that the food options are even better later in the day. I am heading back in October and will arrive in the evening, so I am already dreaming about my options. As you might have noticed while we were looking at the food and drink options, there are food and beverage stations spread throughout the lounge. I liked this for two reasons. First, you can find something to eat or drink no matter where you are sitting. And second, if you're like me, I was able to try out many different sections of the lounge as I roamed around sampling all the options. And I can assure you that there are as many different seating options as there are food and drink options. You definitely won't have a hard time finding a place to relax. Restrooms are located on either end of the lounge. They each seem to have an attendant inside at all times, which probably explains why they always seem so clean. The finishes are high-end, there's plenty of room, and they even supply makeup vanities for freshening up. There are also plenty of toilet stalls. The high-end finishes continue in here, and there's a lot of room, which is always nice if you're bringing in your bags. The lounge also provides a long hallway filled with shower rooms. There seems to be plenty of availability due to the large number, but you need to check in at the concierge desk to sign up for a time slot. The shower rooms are really nice, and in addition to the expected amenities, they also supply a bathrobe and slippers. The play area at the Turkish Business Lounge is hands down the very best children's area I've ever encountered at an airport. They have an adorable seating area with a real popcorn machine conveniently nearby. Right around the corner is a cozy TV nook for parents and kids to lounge, watch children's shows, and get some rest. If your kids need exercise more than they need rest, 
there's an adorable play area that's sure to keep them busy and entertained. My very favorite part is the inside of the airplane. How cute is this? All in all, a fun and colorful space that even the most discerning child should have a lot of fun spending time in. Well done, Turkish Airlines. If you think it's only the kids who get to have fun in the Turkish Airlines lounge, I've got some good news for you. There are plenty of fun things for the adults too. First, there's a spot where you can have a seat and watch 12 TVs at once. I have to admit, I don't really understand the appeal of this space, so fill me in if I'm missing something. Next is an interactive globe that lets you explore Turkish Airlines flight paths around the world. The art gallery that I expected to see must have been replaced by this Champions League Museum. If you're into sports, you can see uniforms and other memorabilia from the UEFA Champions League. There are also two seats and a monitor for playing a video football game, I think. If football is not your thing, you're not out of luck because there's also a golf simulator. It's not every day you can practice your swing at the airport. And last, but certainly not least, is this very cool Hazarfin flight experience. This flight simulator, which is named after the Turkish scholar who was credited by many as the first to fly, lets you soar over the major sites of Istanbul. I may have looked silly with the VR headset, but there was no way I was skipping this. While I highly recommend taking advantage of the fun and unexpected entertainment options that this lounge offers, I know that there are times when you just have to get some work done. But don't worry, because the Turkish lounge has you covered. You can sit in one of these pods for some peace and privacy while working, or feel free to use one of the Apple iMacs, which are conveniently connected to printers. Finally, if your work involves more than just you, you can ask to reserve one of these private meeting rooms. My time in the Turkish Airlines lounge flew by incredibly fast and I regretfully had to leave. I picked up my luggage from the locker and headed out to catch my Turkish Airlines flight back to Chicago. I recently did a video reviewing that flight, so if you're interested in seeing that, I'll put a link in the description below. But for now, what did I think of the Turkish Airlines Lounge? Was it worth getting up in the middle of the night in order to check it out? I would say yes. I absolutely had no regrets about waking up early for it. First, I couldn't have timed my visit any better. I almost had the entire lounge completely to myself, which was a fun and unusual experience. And thankfully, despite the early hour, the lounge was up and running at full speed, with food, drinks, and entertainment widely available. The Istanbul Lounge provides everything you expect from a lounge. Plenty of places to sit and rest, food, drinks, clean bathrooms, showers, and workspaces. But there are a few things that really elevate this lounge to the next level. The food is obviously incredible, from the variety to the quality, A+. And it just made the lounge feel warm and welcoming, a place you don't want to leave. And from all accounts, it's even better later in the day. I'll definitely report back after my upcoming visit in October. I can't wait. I also loved the children's area. It's adorable and so well thought out, a space that combines functionality with a great aesthetic. The entertainment options for adults also set this lounge apart in my opinion. Everything from a mini museum, to a golf simulator, to a flight simulator. I love how Turkish Airlines was thinking outside the box when they designed this lounge. I know this review seems extremely positive, so this might be a good time to mention that as always, my travel experiences are not paid for, sponsored, or discounted in any way. And nobody was informed that I was doing a review. In the case of this lounge, I just happened to really like it. If you enjoyed this tour and review, 
let me know in the comments. And if you've had a chance to try it yourself, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Would you have left at 3.30 in the morning in order to visit? Also, if you enjoy content like this, I hope you'll hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. It's also a great way to support the channel. Until next time, happy travels.